Hi everybody, I am the North of 60 Gamer. My name is Harry Jacobs and I'm here today for Everything Board Games to tell you about a new game on Kickstarter called Doomlings. So thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to go through the game. I'm going to describe the game to you. We're going to do a quick unboxing. Then I'm going to show you the setup. Then we're going to go through how to play and then I'm going to give you some of my final thoughts. The designer describes the game as somewhere on a doomed and distant planet. Life has emerged, competing for the supremacy until the world's inevitable destruction. The objects of the game is to score the most points by the time the world ends. Score points by playing traits for your doomlings species, making them more adaptable, resilient, and mischievous. As doomlings assert their dominance, catastrophes will befall the planet, causing setbacks for each competing species. When the third catastrophe inevitably strikes, the world ends and the Doomlings with the strongest set of traits gets to look at the apocalypse in the eye and declare, I scored the most points. Throughout the game, players will play tactic cards from the community pile and then play them for points. Traits can also have special abilities and bonuses, allowing players to build a wide range of winning combinations. The game is played in rounds using age cards, which have different rules that players must follow. But be warned, hidden in the ages are catastrophes, special rounds with adverse effects that force players to adapt their strategy. Doomlings adds a fun twist to hand management by introducing the gene pool mechanic. Your gene pool is your hand size. It is unique to you and it can either increase or decrease through special traits or even catastrophes. Doomlings includes six colorful gene pool counter markers elegantly tracking how many cards you should hold at the end of your turn. There are opportunities to increase your gene pool which can give you and your species a leg up by providing a larger pool of traits to select for each turn. A lightweight card game for two to six players, Doomlings can be played casually among friends or competitively by the gaming enthusiastic family. Because there are no duplicate cards and age cards are chosen randomly, no two games are ever alike. While a game itself can be learned in five minutes or less, don't be fooled with a hundred plus unique traits in red, blue, green, purple, and colorless and rare, powerful dominant traits, there are countless combinations of play to be discovered. This humorous event-driven set collection hand management game takes between 20 and 45 minutes to play depending on the number of players and sequence of events. Advanced play expansion packs will be also available to add on to the base game for even more enjoyment, including a hidden objective expansion for a fun twist to the game. Doomlings requires no dice or additional pieces, just a jolly embrace of the inevitable end of the world as we know it. So here we are. You're looking at the box. The box is very sturdy. I really like it. I think this is production ready. You can see the rules right on top. There's the rules. So just a few pages of rules in color. So on the back of the rule book, you'll see a URL where you can actually download the PDF so that you can actually have a larger size of the rule set. This game is cards. There it is. There are lots of cards. There's a top card. Now we're gonna just take that off Pardon me while I dig the shrink. The shrink is always a little bit messy when you're talking about on a on screen. Let me just see if I can put these down without spilling them. You can see right away there are a ton of cards. Here's your blue cards. We have flight. Migratory. Oh, we got some green cards. Oh, look at that. Photosynthesis. Just persuasion. So a great number of cards in the deck, each one individual, as they already mentioned in the 
description that no two cards are alike. So a lot of thought went into this game. A lot of work because coming up with an idea for each individual card for hundreds of card is not exactly common in the gaming industry. So this impresses me because of the small footprint plus the uniqueness of each of the cards. I think it's going to make for a really good play. I think it's going to be a fun game. But let's take a look. So we're going to go down uh, and I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to go off screen. I'm going to sort these cards out, sort of set it up, explain the setup, then we'll jump into some play. So I'm going to show you how to set the game up really quickly. It is a quick setup. You can see there's basically four types of cards sitting in front of you. They're the age cards, the catastrophe cards, the trait cards, and the gene pool. Each person will get a gene pool card and they will set it to the value five. As the game plays, that value will go up and down according to the rules of the game as they change. But at the beginning of the game, everybody starts with five. I'm just going to move that off to the side for now to make give me a, just a touch more space. Here we have the age cards. As you can see, we have the Lunar Retreat. Players cannot play purple traits. High Tides. If you play a trait with no effect, you may play another trait with no effect. What that means is each turn you are allowed to play one trait. In this in this particular rule allows you to break that rule if the traits have no traits and I'll show you what that means when we play and I'll point that out and there are 25 of these so what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle up the deck of 25 and then we're going to put them out in a row of three one two three and then we're going to actually deal out three cards to each one of these piles We'll just put this one up. I'll explain the birth of life in a moment. That is the starter card. Then we're going to take our catastrophes, such as mass extinction. So I remember we told you that you start with five gene pool. This card starts with a minus one gene pool. And the text says, discard one card from your hand for every colorless trait in your trait pile. Colorless are basically a grayish looking card. At the end of the world, if this is the last catastrophe or the third catastrophe, discard one green trait from your trait pile. So the trait pile will be the pile of traits that you put in front of you through the game. Again, we'll talk about that when we set up the game and play through the game. We will shuffle our catastrophes. And we'll take one catastrophe each. So each game will be different because you have 25 different age cards and 15 different catastrophe cards. Once you've dealt your catastrophe cards out, you will take your stack, first stack, and you will give it a shuffle and put it down. You'll take your next stack, give it a shuffle, put it on top of the first stack. And lastly, the same thing with the last one. You will take your four cards, shuffle them up, put them on top. Once you have completed your age deck, you will take the birth of life card and you will put it on the top. This is the starting rules of the game, plus five gene pool, which we already talked about, until world's end. So that is until the end of the game. Play one trait each turn, stabilize to end your turn. We're gonna explain what those terms mean. I'm gonna set this game up. I'm going to play a few rounds to give you an idea how the game plays. So I've set up the game to play. We have the blue player, and I'm going to be playing blue. We have the gray player and the yellow player. The gene pool markers are set to five. We have our birth of life card turned over, and we're ready to go. We have our age deck set up, and we're ready to go. I've dealt myself five cards. We have the mighty war. Opponents must discard two cards from their hand at random. I'd kind of like that right at the beginning of the game. I just do want to point out that in this particular card, if you look up at the very top here, there's a word dominant. You may only have two dominant 
cards down for the entire game so play them judiciously there is a situation where there is a H card that will allow you to perhaps play a third dominant it is the only time you can break that rule you may also note that down here are some end game scoring conditions there's a little teardrop here and there's a little trillium sign on, on other cards for now though being a take that game I am going to play mighty war what that means is that each player now is going to take one or two of their five cards at random and they're going to discard them down the stabilization phase comes at the end of the turn which means they're going to start their turn with less cards than normal so once I've played my card I will stabilize and I will bring up the next card and it becomes the gray person's turn green has decided to play it appealing it's just a three point card he's going to put that down he has two cards he can draw five during the stabilization so he's going to draw three cards to bring his card hand back up to three one two and three and now it is the yellow player's turn the yellow player has decided he's going to play brute strength now he's going to take a hit to his gene pool so he's going down to four but he's taking a chance that this score as you can see is a four pointer and that is his strategy right now so he's going to try now to bring his gene pool back up he is down also to two so he is going to draw up during his stabilization back up to four this time because of the four change in the gene pool it comes back around to my my turn which i've already taken the, the first player marker is going to change to the gray player we're going to take turn over an age card it is eternal night after you stabilize draw one extra card the gray players decided to play nosy look at three cards from an opponent's hand steal one and play it immediately he says I'm going to hit the guy that's down already. He's minus one on the gene pool. So he's going to come across, decide which card he wants to take. He, he likes Venomous. It says, play another trait, then move Venomous to an opponent's trait pile. So he's going to take his Venomous card. He's going to play another trait. He's going to play teeth and then he's going to give it to another player and he goes here you go i like to kick you while you're down he's going to stabilize to five so he's going to draw two cards one two yellow is going to play fine motor skills just puts that in his purple card he can draw up to two cards to stabilize. Oh, plus he gets the extra card, as does this guy. So actually, he should have gotten an extra card too. Thanks to the Eternal Knight. This is one thing I really have to sort of stop and just say, be careful of the rules because the stabilizations change and the gene pool changes and you have to remember to draw cards, draw down cards. All that type so it does get i found playing yesterday with my wife that we made a lot of mistakes that way so just thought i'd word of warning you do have to pay attention it comes back to my turn blue what are we going to play what do we have here we have blubber worth four points though we have a dominant card you may at the end of the world you may change all your traits of one color to an alternative color which is really good for a scoring you can see there's the little scoring marker we have memory you may discard your hand for stabilization and we have another dominant card plus two for every trait in your lowest count i kind of like blubber so i'm going to play blubber eternal night is here so i'm going to draw up to my five and take an extra one for eternal night that is the end of the round we're going to move the turn marker over to yellow we are going to pick up the next card 
It's Comet Showers. Discard one card from your hand randomly. Kind of feel sorry for poor Yellow. He's not doing very well here. He keeps getting kicked while he's down, it seems. And myself. So we've discarded a card at random from each of us, and we're going to start the next round. Yellow has decided to play Voracious. So he gets to play an additional card and discard one card from his trait pile. Well, he's got that venomous negative too. He says, no, thank you. Off it goes. And now it allows him to play another trait card. He's going to play Sentience. Now this is a dominant card, so he can only have a maximum of two. And it's choose a color, plus one all traits of that color in your trait pile. That happens at the end of the world. He is a four. We have two left in his card pile, which is just off to the side. And I'll leave it there just because of the space considerations. My turn. We have symbiosis. Symbiosis. Wood, woody Sticks, Hot Temper, discard two cards from your hand, and we have a dominant. You may change all your traits of one color to an alternative color. I'll go with that. So I will play this down into my tableau. I'm still at five cards. I will draw up. It is now the gray player's turn. The great player has decided to play Vampirism. Steal a trait from an opponent's trait pile and play its action. He's decided to steal Mighty War. Which means everybody now will discard two cards. Yellow discards two cards at random. The advantage of this, of what Gray just did, is that he is going to be drawing up to his uh, gene pool. So it's not going to hurt him at the beginning of the next turn like everybody else. He has now got two cards of five. He is now going to stabilize up to three cards. That is the end of the turn. We will move the first player marker down to myself again. I'm going to try to, as much to keep this as organized as we can. But I am having a very limited space. As you can see, I have a very limited space here. It's back to me. We are going to draw the top of the age card. It is Arid Lands. We cannot play blue cards. It is my turn. I can't play it with the red trait. I'll just play Hot Temper. Discard two cards from my hand. That allows me to pick up five new cards for stabilization. Green has decided to play Photosynthesis. It allows him to draw two cards. If either of those two cards are green, he can play one of them. It was not. He is still at a five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he actually has six cards due to that draw. So he's going to actually have to um, discard a card down to his gene pool size. Yellow plays Fangs. He is down to only one card. So he can stabilize to four. And we're back to, to me. The red marker is going to change to the gray player. We are going to draw an age card. Should be a catastrophe. It is. So the catastrophe is Deuce X Mechana. Zero to the gene pool. There is no increase or decrease to the gene pools of any player. Stabilized catastrophe averted. So basically, if, as I, if I interpret this correctly, we will stabilize catastrophe averted. So if anybody has less than their cards 
or more than their courage, they're going to stabilize, and that is really not a bad effect. That is the first of three catastrophes. Now, this game goes on round after round uh, until the third catastrophe, at which point we're going to add up our points. So we're going to stop here after the first catastrophe, and then we're going to talk a little bit about scoring. There's a four-step process to scoring, and we'll go through that really quickly, and then I'll give you some final thoughts. We've reached the end of the game. The last catastrophe has come up. It is the four horsemen. The first thing we do in our end game for scoring is to trigger the world's end, which is discard one trait from your trait pile with a face value of four or higher. So basically, I'm going to discard Faith. You can see Faith is a 4 value. And we put that into the discard now. The next step is to evaluate any card with the Trillium symbol. In this case, it says I get a plus 1 for every pair of green traits in my opponent's trait pile. My opponent has 3. So that is a pair, a single pair rounded down is 1 point. So I've gotten 1 point. The next step is to evaluate each of my cards for the value of the card. So we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, 15, plus the one that we got over here. So we're sitting at 16 points so far. And lastly, we're going to evaluate the little symbol down here, which is a end of game symbol. It's going to add scoring. In this case, we're going to add choose a color plus one for all traits of that color in your trait pile. In this case, gray is kind of the best one here. So it gives me two more points. Adding those two points up gives me 16 total points for this hand. Of course, there'll be a higher score because I didn't play to the end of the game. I just wanted to get to the point where I could teach you how to score. It's a quick game, about 20 minutes. Once you get into it, it's really just bang, 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 and the game is over. It is that quick. This game is a lot of fun, but I'm, let's go down and talk about final thoughts. So, final thoughts. Personally, I like the game. I played a few games with my wife yesterday, and we found it an easy-to-learn game. Constantly changing because of the cards. Each card is unique, which is kind of fun. That means you've got 100 plus trade cards. No two games are going to be alike. It's an enjoyable, fun, light filler game. It's family friendly. And I think it's going to be a good seller on Kickstarter. I think it's going to fund. It should fund. The cards are of great quality. The box is good quality. The artwork on the box I particularly enjoy. I think overall this is a good quality product. I think it's going to be a fun little game. And I'm hoping that you will back it when you see it or buy it retail if you see it. This is Harry Jacobs from Everything Board Games. I thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed the playthrough of Doomlings. This is going to be available on Kickstarter or, or is, depending on when you're watching it, available on Kickstarter. So please back the game if you see it. Thank you very much for watching. This is Harry Jacobs for Everything Board Games.